I'd like to call this meeting of the Southwest Licking Local Board of Education to order. It is December 16th, 2021. It is seven o'clock. We are in the district meeting room. I'd like to recognize all the visitors here and at home watching. And if you all would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. This is Pataskala Elementary Third Grade Connection Club. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very nice. All right, Mr. Jones, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Engel? Here. Mrs. Moore? Here. Mrs. Spindler? Here. Mr. Zani? Here. Mr. Vincent? Here, a quorum is present. We shall continue public participation. No one? Okay, we need an adoption of the agenda, please. I'll move adoption of the agenda. Second. Mr. Jones? Mr. Zani? Yes. Mrs. Spindler? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Vincent? Yes, agenda is adopted. We will move on. We have a presentation, building project updates. Good evening. Hello. How are you guys? Good. good. How are you? Good. 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 Good I to see you again. Yep. Good to see you guys. Uh, I think Dr. Pers Perkins misses my joke. She keeps inviting me back. And yeah. <laughs> so there was a dog. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Well, I'll have a quick presentation, just summarizing what's happening uh, currently at the sites. Uh, this is uh, we'll greet you as you're coming in. It's the uh, I don't want to call it a dedica uh, dedication plaque, but simply an acknowledgement of the sale to the school district uh, that we had promised. Uh, it had gone up, and it was a giant rock, but uh, Dr. Perkins asked that some arborvitas be put around it, and I think it really adds a nice look. So you'll see that coming in. Does the rock have any significance, or it's just a... Uh, no, actually, the rock we were going to use got sold. Okay. So we went and looked for another rock, and... Okay. Uh, there it is. I think it looks pretty nice. Thank you. Very nice rock. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't uh, rock the boat, John. All right. So the, the first building that finished up for us was Watkins Intermediate School. We did have uh, our 11th month punch. It was completed. We are working on um, correcting those uh, findings. Uh, Starting Monday, we have the uh, final floor company coming in and they're gonna fix the volleyball situation that we had talked about. Uh, I do have a picture too that I'll show you there. And then also, we still have the fiber run that needs to run down Warrior Way that will connect it to the Watkins building. And it will also be used to connect and, and light up those blue lights that you've seen uh, put on Warrior Way. So uh, here's the gym floor just to kind of show you again that uh, uh, the lines were incorrect. So they'll be taking off the tape and stuff to the left. Unfortunately, as we're walking around, there's some ink, and hopefully that gets cleaned up so that the floor looks nice and shiny when, when the kids come back. should take two to three weeks to let everything dry and be repaired, so it's going to push the uh, uh, startup time when we come back from break. Watkins Memorial High School, again, it was the second building. It's uh, in operation. Construction punch list work continues, so the original punch list is still being finished. Uh, we also have some additional owner items, uh, and, and that work continues. And that would be things that uh, as we move in, the owner decides, hey, we want a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that. Uh, and with the long lead items on a lot of the uh, materials, uh, it's kind of stretched out a little bit. Matter of fact, uh, next week on the 23rd, we have a delivery of some additional teacher desks because uh, they wanted to have two teacher desks in some of the classrooms. And, and that just is now getting in. So some of those original items are um, are coming in and again long lead items are slow to arrive but when they come in we keep you know working on those things to finish things up uh, and I think everybody's been very patient uh, you know I, I was out there today walking around with Mr. Kurth and you know there are little things that we can do and, and we're doing them but uh, they, they love the building and, and uh, it's, it's coming to an end here pretty soon hopefully. Video wall uh, finally finished and is working there always had been one or two TVs that never seemed to be working right um, the parking lot striping went a little bit overboard, but it was done. Uh, and the Wi-Fi issue still needs to be resolved. And, and I had down all eyes on Elida, but Jeff and I were talking this evening, and uh, <coughs> our eyes may have to weaken a little bit. It, it, it wasn't as successful as we thought it was going to be. So 
Elida is a local district up north that I happen to work at, but they also have uh, the same Wi-Fi issue that we're currently having in, in terms of, uh, um, uh, you know, we're, we're set at 1.0 right now, and we want to get to 2.5 and, cons and consistency with that 2.5 range, and we just can't do that. So we're running at 1.0, uh, and Jeff, if you have questions, I know he's back there. He'd love to probably talk about it, but there's a lot of people working on it. It just has not been resolved yet. So a couple pictures. Uh, I thought Dr. Perkins would like to see these again. She was very. <laughs> <Not happy. laughs> There's the uh, the, the uh, big screen. To, well, now you put them up there, so now we have to go back. What the hell are they? they weren't supposed to do that. We had told them no. We don't. Yeah. Anyways, they're going to fix it. Yeah, there's yeah. quite a few. There's a bazillion of them. There's a, there's a lead requirement with the projects, and if you go over to the 4 or 5 building, there's about a half a dozen of them that, there, too. So the requirement is to, to have them there to meet the point. Uh, the 4 or 5 building had already met that point, so there didn't need to be anything there. And over here, we said if we still needed that particular uh, point, that we would put signs up, and the signs we could take down. But the word never got transferred through the Robertson chain, and, and uh, they ended up on the, on the pavement. Ugh. So hmm. they're getting corrected, as Dr. Perkins said. Oh, I thought you had shared that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <coughs> They turned this on special for me today. They said uh, the kids love to see it. Uh, it has some sound to it, but uh, that's the video wall on the fire. Warrior Way, a lot of things happening along there. The sign marker that I've already shown you. Uh, Kendrick has been back out working on the detention pond area, although at times it seems like a retention pond. Uh, but it is uh, under uh, you know, renovation again, if you want to call it, because it was originally built, and, and now they're putting in the final plumbing that will alleviate that so the water will get away and be, a, a, again, a detention pond instead of retention. Lawhorn has been out there to do their field work, and that's uh, the future area of the tennis courts and, and potentially baseball and softball field areas. The emergency call stations have been installed. They're not activated because the fiber has not been run down the road. As soon as the fiber is uh, run down the road, then we'll bring back out uh, uh, the installers and they'll hook that up. And there'll be a camera and there'll be a call button and uh, hopefully it will never have to be used, but it is something that we feel will make the road safer. Cars and buses uh, going off, oh, the split rail fence. Dr. Perkins had a split rail fence put up. We had some cars going off the road there. I think it looks very nice. Got a picture or two for you here. And then uh, unfortunately, uh, you guys can see some of the damage that's been happening. Uh, got a lot of asphalt out there, but the cars don't seem to stay on it. So here's the, uh, the, the pond area again, the work that's been taken care of there. They had to grow grass before they could start working on it again. Um, so it's uh, um, kind of, uh, well, why did you plant grass and grow it and then tear it back up? But it's just what was required to do. Um, there's the uh, split rail fence. Mm -hmm. There is the um, <coughs> pole lights. It's uh, a couple different views. You can see the, the little character up there. That's where the camera's going to go. Uh, here's some of the damages to the, the asphalt. Again, just a couple sites. What's, what's troublesome is they're not just driving along the corners, but you can see they're driving through the actual yard right. to get out of spots. So we kind of have to curb that. Uh, Todd Liston has put out little, little stakes to try to help people or guide them onto the asphalt, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Aetna Elementary renovation, as you know, uh, we're hopefully going to be moving in uh, shortly here and opening up in January. We do have te temporary occupancy until the DAS system is installed and passes the test. There is a new DAS registration that needs to take place. We were just informed of that, and from my understanding from, from Rick, who's actually filling that out for us, uh, there's now a requirement to go back and fill one out for the 4 or 5 building. Uh, so that needs to be taken place. The GM punch list uh, had been completed, so again, we can begin to move in, and that's going to be starting tomorrow. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, there are going to be more of the larger trucks bringing over a lot of the items. Uh, soft surface playground has been installed. The new traffic pattern for buses and parents have been lined out. If you've driven by uh, at an elementary, you'll see the asphalt is all uh, ready for the parents. Unfortunately, numerous teacher desks were damaged in the shipping, and with the long lead time, they repaired what came in, but new ones will be coming in to replace them. Uh, roof repair underway, that's a separate from Robertson. K&W Roofing has started that. Remember that we had some issues that we wanted to take care of, and that's in the process. 
I just wanted to remind everybody, renovation means to restore to a good state of repair. We've got two super nice brand new buildings with everything new. So when you walk through the elementary, there's gonna be some new and there'll be some old, but it's uh, all been uh, looked at and taken care of. Um, if there's something that comes up, obviously uh, we'll, we'll fix that. But just a reminder, the buses will be coming in you know, on the south side of the, uh, the school lot and the parents will be coming in the north. That was requested by the TRC. Uh, if we were to leave it the same as it was before, we would have had to have expanded the road down at the bottom, which would have been more expensive. So that was a nice switch. Uh, looking at some of the, the new front and the new front area that they'll walk in, parents will see, that's bright, clean. Um, this again is showing the HVAC <laughs> investment that we had in the building. Also, the, the asphalt is down, the concrete curbs, the curb again that we joked about uh, Dr. Moore tripping on, and uh, again, the units on the top of the roof. We're still looking for that video, by the way. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the uh, soft surface play area and the asphalt around it, a little different color. Um, but I think the kids will love that. Again, this is K through three, so a little smaller pieces, but still uh, very, very nice. Uh, again, um, you'll see throughout the parking lot, the, the picture in the lower right shows you concrete that has a little bit of age and then some new pieces right next to it. So again, this study was done a little while back, but uh, for the most part, uh, we've, we've had to tweak it a little bit, but uh, um, I, I think the old and the new will match together. You'll see the one way there in the front. Again, that's where the parents will be. They're hopefully gonna help guide the parents through the, the new process of where to drop the kids off. But, and again, all the old lighting and things outside, they were changed to LED, down lighting. Uh, this will show you like a drinking fountain, a uh, similarity between a new and a renovated one. The little, little creature over there on the right side is showing you that uh, <laughs> that is a renovated one, so the water will come down. It's an elf. It's an elf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I put them there. Uh, so you got the little elf, so water will go into that area, and instead of being collected there, it actually filters out into the sink. So there's just little changes and, and things that you'll see, but they look, both look very, very nice. They're both functional, and they, I think the people like the bottle fillers, but there's a little difference, and you'll see that from place to place. Uh, cafeteria from both angles, one from, uh, you know, by the playground, and then one as you're walking in, just again, some colors, and there's going to be similar tables in that particular room as there were in the four or five building. And, and again, we've started to move in. This is, uh, was an old equipment room, and now it's uh, been opened up because the technology's been moved across the hallway, and this room has a whole new purpose for them. And obviously, organization uh, can happen when you move in, so hopefully it can be maintained, and uh, it's a great space. You can see the library in the background. Um, that's, uh, I showed you pictures of that last time. Uh, Watkins Middle School, um, Robertson has sent out two letters regarding issues that may impact the current timeline. Uh, we uh, received letters about the generator and also about the air handler units. Uh, both of these delivery dates have been delayed. Uh, Robertson's pursuing options. Um, the generator is obviously needed to get the uh, life safety and the air handlers are very much needed to condition the building so that you can install the, the flooring and the casework and things like that. So we're reviewing the timeline right now and uh, once that's resolved or you know, whatever happens to it, uh, we'll, be, we'll be probably talking about it. Here's some pictures from that area. The gym, the floor is gone, the bleachers are gone. Wow. Um, Interesting floor design, a little different than the floors that we put in the other buildings. There was actually like furring strips on the concrete, about that high with little pieces of white insulation uh, laid down and then the boards run across them. So it doesn't quite have the depth that you would need for, for full regulation floors. So we're pursuing some options for that. But um, it is a large space if you walk in there uh, with everything out. Uh, the just to kind of give you an update again on, uh, uh, I guess, the traffic flow, because I, I think there's been a lot of questions about the athletics and what's going to be open, what's going to be accessible, and, and so forth, how much parking is going to be left. So again, the buses are going to come in the front. That green little, like, um, dumbbell, that's just showing. There's going to be a, a earth berm put in there to try to... Uh, control the traffic, people going sideways and a whole bunch of different angles. It's the same thing down by Warrior Way. All new asphalt will be coming. It's all part of that project. That's why it's still a little rough down there. 
Up on the, the west side where those X's are, that's going to be closed off. Uh, but you'll see, you'll see, there's some limited parking along the stadium side. Most of the parking's along the south side for staff, but there is parking out front. And again, um, the number of parking spots should be uh, very similar to what we had before, just a little bit safer layout. Okay. Uh, some inside shots. The kitchen's been gutted. That's one of the uh, um, alternates that we had picked up. Uh, this is the hallway from both angles, looking, um, you know, basically from the front door entrance and <coughs> also from up by the concession stand or the old concession stand area. But you can see how we're encroaching on the, the middle areas, and we're doing that because we're putting hallways in down the sides. Uh, I know people that have visited there, I mean, these are nice hallways and, you know, good width to them, and I think it's going to really help with the traffic flow for the students getting to and from their classrooms. Uh, this is a classroom. I put this up because Rick loves that gray tint on the wall. So that's one of the teacher walls in a, a typical classroom. And uh, now to Kirksville Elementary Innovation. Uh, uh, just to give you an update again, you're going to be voting on something tonight, I believe. But uh, that's the DD designs tonight. And we're uh, already into CDs, uh, getting very, very close to be putting that one on the market so that we can begin renovating that. And that's really what I had. Oh, I had one more thing. I forgot. At Kirkersville, just because I've showed you all the other traffic flows, the buses will be coming in the same place. The parents uh, will have an expanded lot towards the bottom. And the purple area is that front that the board uh, presented to the voters. There's going to be a more locked down type front entrance for people to come visit. So that upper right hand corner of that purple area is a new office area. And the old office area is being renovated. So some neat things are going on or will go on at that particular building once that starts. So, that questions on all the different Is that projects. a traffic circle at Kirk? That, that will be uh, a roundabout. So roundabout, parents will yeah. go in and then they go back out the same way. One of the problems that you know, we have out there is the number of cars that sit on that state route yeah, and yeah. just block things. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to get them off the road. Okay. I have a couple questions. Um, the intermediate school gym floor has, I assume someone has contacted the youth basketball league because I know yeah. they're us using that space for practices and games. Yeah, they've known for quite some time. Okay, and then curiosity, what, if someone were to use that emergency call button on Warrior Way, where does it go? Does it go to Lincoln County Sheriff or does it go to, it's who does to it 911. call? 911. It's supposed to go to, yes. Okay. Thanks. Set up. Cool. I have a question. Um, the bus lanes and the intermediate, the, the three lanes that take you into the intermediate, and then you come around and you go out. Between the high school and yeah, the, yeah before okay. you get to actually going out, before you get to where the, the turn lanes are and everything, there's a patch of grass, and then there's a patch of grass over at the intermediate. And it's sort of like diagonal, but it's. <coughs> constant water right there. If you go back to one of your, your pictures, go back to the picture where you had five. Where I had the five different pictures of like people driving through the grass yeah. and stuff. Um, so it's like right here. And then there's like another patch of grass back here, but it's constant water. No rain, constant water. At the corner of the high school lot? And it runs towards the, the it uh, runs towards the intermediate, yeah, yeah. Oh, in the, in the bus loop. Mm -hmm. I, it doesn't get to the bus loop because there's a, a patch of grass right there. So you got your three loops, or you got your three lanes coming in, mm -hmm. and then you got that patch of grass next to that third lane, right? And when the bus are we by the uh, sign yet? Signs. Uh, yes, yes, and I would say it's a little bit south from there. Okay, it's probably that corner. It's constant. And there is, uh, there is no um, uh, storm drains in that parking lot. So all the water naturally just flows to the, uh, to the east. And when it gets down to that berm, there's actually, is, are you talking about where that uh, uh, almost like a four inch black pipe is coming through the, uh, the sod area? No, oh, no, okay. I'm talking in the Because there's water lot. there that slows down and then it bleeds across towards that sign. Yeah, I'm talking <coughs> in the parking lot. It's, it's on our asphalt. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I'll show you. 
Yeah, you want to <laughs> show me. But it's, like I said, because it's, it's constantly flowing across our, our asphalt, and that can't be good to have it constantly wet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to get together. Later. Okay. Sorry. Anything else? So what does 1.0 versus 2.5 mean? So right now we're running all the access points with a 1 gigabit uplink, which is still fairly fast. I mean, the building only has a 1 gigabit connection to the internet. So each access point also has a 1 gig connection to the network. But the way they designed it was that each one would have a 2.5 gig connection to the network. The problem we're having is there is a slight incompatibility between the Tell Labs system that they installed and the access points. And so Tell Labs That will because as it goes forward, the next upgrade to the access points that we just put in, say in seven or eight years, will be 10 gig, which the con system, the tele side, is fully support. So, you know, it's not, it's not just for today, but looking forward, this really needs to be resolved. So. Okay. I'm happy to get into the details if you guys have any other questions. No. <laughs> I was on that phone call last <laughs> night, too. <laughs> The bottom line, when it's all said and done, when you're sitting in the auditorium, you can get internet yes. or Wi-Fi. Okay. Right now. Um, okay. They, they went and plugged that in all into the 2.5 gig ports just by the, the design documents, and so those access points are kind of going up and down and not really working. But um, if, the, if the packs are going to try and deploy tomorrow, they're going to have to be packed. So we're going around Monday morning and moving everything to the 1 gig connection, so it will all come up for us. Okay. And I just have one more question, the mm -hmm. um, parking spot issue. Who said that we had to do that? Was that part of the project? The, the, the lining? The yeah, the, the, um, the vehicle, electric vehicle. Like, th there's, the yeah, emission, yeah. there's lead requirements. I mean, yeah. there's, and Kurt would probably be best to, to, uh, to be talk a little bit about that, but we went after a certain level, and in order to obtain that, we have to meet so many points. Okay. And that's one of the points. So. He's got a Thank presentation you. right after, so okay. kind of back, back up and let him finish. Yeah, so just, just to add to what Bob was saying, so that is a lead requirement to have that on there, but often districts don't want to either put a sign or put that on there, so um, we, can't, we show it on our documents to get the lead point, but then what actually is installed is you have some flexibility. Okay. So my understanding was the discussion was don't put those in, but then it they were installed okay. or painted on there. So, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening. So, uh, I'm going to take a few minutes since it's been a while since we've been here, but this is uh, the latest and greatest of the new K3 building that we've been working on. So, I'm going to see if my yeah, if laser pointer works. So this is kind of based on the 4-5 intermediate building and also the high school, kind of a combination of, kind of a combination of both. So the way that the building is laid out, um, the main entrance is located here, and then this is the office area with the cafeteria behind it, and then media center and the gymnasium. And then this is a classroom wing, which is the kindergarten rooms are a little bit larger than the first grade rooms. And then this other wing is um, second and third grade. And then in the middle of both of those wings are uh, restrooms, uh, special education room, mechanical room, janitor's closet, that type of thing. So it's, it's uh, all one story uh, classroom wing and then Back to this portion of the building, this is the kitchen area, another restroom, art and music, and then the 
boiler rooms and delivery areas. So that's a quick rundown of the, of the layout of the building. And this is schematic design. So we've got most of 22 to go through all of the estimating and the, uh, and the uh, further development of the documents. Um, and then if we want to go to the other, the other drawing uh, for tonight, um, this is kind of an overall view of the, of the site. So if you can see my laser again, this is the K3 building and this is um, Watkins Road out here and then refugees across the top. Um, but um, again, main entrance is here with the office. Um, so the bus uh, drop off would be here uh, with some staff parking in the middle. And then um, we would have cars enter the, enter the site down here at the, at the light close to the um, renovation project. Oh. And then they would be off of the off of the main drag and come up here and drop off, turn around and come back. And this uh, is just some other options, but the current middle school, then we're not showing that on there since that's scheduled to um, come down at some point in time. So this is kind of a combination of long-term planning and um, that type of thing, but really the focus will be on the the K3 in the immediate in the immediate future. So does entrance three go away altogether? Um, you'll have to tell me what entrance three yeah, actually does. It, it does go away. It does. Yeah. So okay. even off, off um, school time for practices and stuff, kids can't get back to the soccer and the baseball and the track. Well, they, they can through entrance one and two right. get back there. Or they can through the bus loop even. There's a connection road she put in when school's not in session. Up here is the old entrance three, I think it's in this area here. Yep. But there's a connection road here that they can use okay. when school's not in okay. session. I so was just concerned for like um, big events like, I don't know, McGowan and uh, craft, other things that we utilize all three entrances, band competitions, mm -hmm. but if it's still there for non-school hour, like a, I don't know. Yeah. It's not that we, big of a can, concern. I was just to, curious. <laughs> sure, sure. And we can continue to develop that too and, and have additional discussions as needed. We're trying to avoid having to widen walking, so. No, right. I understand. I was just yeah. curious. Right, right. Where were the bathrooms by the gym? Uh, the bathrooms by the gym are can, in that other Can plan. you go back? those will be located down in this area. Okay. I have a question if you can go back to the other <laughs> map. Sure. <laughs> it's easy for me. Um, the new elementary is um, pretty close in proximity to the practice soccer field. Will that still be functional or will that be too close? Um, it's not too close. It's um, I think roughly 150 feet from the end of the building to where the soccer practice field is okay. now. And we're, we're trying to balance that dimension with being away from the road and being able to fit the parking and, and that type of thing. So it's kind of a balancing act of trying to fit all that in there from the road to the practice field. All right. Well, two questions there. Could we... Um, would it make sense to move the practice soccer field to the other side where there's nothing? There's a giant hill on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I haven't been back beyond. Okay. Yeah. And then my other question is, um, I know we've had a lot of issues with water and soccer. Will this, where will the drainage for this new building go? So we're still working on the details of that, but it's probably going to be back in this area. Because right now it collects up there near Watkins. Right. Watkins. So right. There's a. Right. It's been full for about a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So we are aware of aware of that concern. Okay. And again, just like all the other projects, we have to go through the 
TRC committee and the EPA requirements and, and all that to bring everything up to the, to the current regulations. Okay, thank you. Sure. Can you go back to the first one real quick, Kurt? <laughs> sure can. You said we, we're having a discussion later on about the K3 building. This design is 800 kids. Okay. Four, uh, so eight classrooms per grade level. So that's what we're looking at. That's what we're going to need additional money for based on that design right there. Just want to see that. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Request to speak on agenda items. Teamsters, Southwest Licking Education Association. All right. Approval of minutes, November 15th meeting. Motion approval. Second. <coughs> Discussion, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes. Those have been approved. We'll move on to financial report. Need a motion to accept that. Uh, so moved. Second. Mr. Jones. Uh, quick, it's fairly routine month. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, estimates came in pretty close to what we were expecting for the month. Uh, year date revenue is about two hundred thousand dollars less than what we expected, but our expenditures are six hundred eighty-three thousand less than we budgeted. So we're actually plus four hundred eighty-six thousand dollars so far this year. Obviously, it's still early but we're running very well. So there's really nothing out of the ordinary we didn't expect to occur this month. So I can ask, answer any questions you have about this month. But. Nope. Anyone? Okay. Mr. Jones. Huh? Mrs. Engel. I'm sorry, Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Zaini. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes. Not is approved. We will continue on personnel consent calendar. I believe we could probably take them A through. Well, we could probably take all of them. Motion approval A through K. Second. All right. You guys want to talk about the MOUs or anything? Sure. I mean, I can. So the MOU is with um, the Teamsters and the Transportation Unit. Uh, we have a dispatcher who um, volunteers or and or has to drive the bus. As well of, told. As of pretty much the whole year just because of our shortage of um, bus drivers. So when she does that, she gets paid her dispatcher rate as opposed to um, even the entry level bus driver. So this would effectively pay her when driving a bus what, a, what the rest of the bus drivers make. So, and, and it is prorated back into um, October 16th when we change the um, sub pay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. In Mrs. Single. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes. That is approved. We'll move on to business items. Um, I think we could probably take A through G. That's what I'm thinking too, if you want to, yes. Okay. I move we take items 7A through G. Second. Board <coughs> um, of Trustees, everybody knows this is basically a reputation to a point. Uh, a new member for seven years. So uh, B is policies, as I indicated, there's two policies there. One deals with um, graduation requirements. The other one is uh, board member compensation to bring our policy in line with what the board approved at an organizational meeting back in January of 2021. Um, uh, hold on. Speaking of graduation requirements. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's just the additional half credit of the financial literacy. So starting with, I um, believe, eighth graders this year. For next year's freshmen, <coughs> so that's it for that. Uh, see a second reading of interscholastic X-ray eligibility. Um, 
D is the DD phase for Crypto Elementary Renovation. Basically, it's a resolution to just move us forward to the next project, uh, next phase, which is construction documents. At this point, uh, there's a lot of alternates. There's about 35 alternates at this point because we didn't have the money from the COPS issuance at the time did DD. So actually when the construction alternate, the construction documents come in, the alternates are gonna be whittled down to probably 10 or less. So we're bringing pretty close to almost $2 million of the alternates into the project because we have 3 million additional for the renovation. So I asked the board to do that so we can keep moving forward. You wanna say anything about the swim train or anything? Um, it's just Mr. Jarvis taking the swim kids to Camp McKinley. Um, in January the 14th and 15th. He does that every year, so it's an overnight trip. Oh, the school calendar. The calendar. So this is the proposed school calendar for the 22-23 um, school year, fairly similar to this year's calendar. Um, <clears throat> depending on what happens with uh, the renovations to the middle school, we may have to reevaluate some things on there. Um, if, if the move-in date is delayed, we'll have to pay, take a look at when we can get in there and then have some adjustment with some days off um, for kids and teachers so we can effectively get Parkersville in to the old middle school and the middle school into the new middle school. So that may have to be something we come back to the board with later, but it's too soon to have a, a date for that. Um, the rest of it is pretty, pretty standard. I don't know if you guys have any questions on that. And the calendar has been a the staff has seen it and voted on it. And the all union, that. yes. Okay. And they've um, made some suggestions, and those were all taken into consideration. I think actually everything they suggested, we went with. So. Good. Mm -hmm. Right. The next one is a musical theater international contract. Um, <clears throat> we've been using them for a few years now, and um, they always send us a contract. I always read through it. It always says we're going to follow the laws of New York. You know, we're not going to do that. You know, it always says we can indemnify them. Well, higher revised code doesn't allow school districts to indemnify anybody. So <clears throat> that's really all the changes I've made in the past to the contract. It's never been an issue until this year. Um, made the same changes, said to them, they said back to you, so they won't accept them. Uh, <clears throat> so I think we got a new person, assuming looking over the contract versus maybe somebody did in the past. I'm not sure why. We've said to them twice, and they still wouldn't accept it. So I, I'm you know, at this point, I can't sign it, you know, because it basically violates high law. Right. Um, there's an email in there that kind of came in late. Uh, I was hoping sooner. It was from our attorney, Warren Grody. He's looked over the contract. Uh, he's basically saying we probably don't have a choice because um, the reason being probably all musical theater companies are going to have these same requirements. You're going to have to try to identify them. You're going to have to follow different laws in the state of Ohio. If you're going to have a performing arts program and you're trying to get music from a big company, you're probably going to run into this issue over and over again. Really? Is what he felt. I know. Kind of interesting. <laughs> um, so basically, one of the issues I bring to the board is that if I did sign it personally, and I did sign it and send to him, there is an argument in law that I could be personally liable if we violate the contract. So. I said, hopefully there's never going to be an issue with copyright or filming, all that stuff. So um, <clears throat> so the board really has issues that, you know, basically do we sign this as is, hope there's no issue, and if there is, we have to fight in New York and <coughs> Ohio. Um, he goes into real good detail, like I said, I had hoped this earlier in the week, but he thought it was for next board meeting instead of this one, so we didn't get to him until today. You know, it's a three-page document, an explanation of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> says in short, he basically says in short, I cannot say that if you reject this agreement that you won't run into the same issue with the next contractor. If you do, you may learn that you either have to accept the agreement or not put on any performances. So it comes down, we're going to still try to negotiate with them to see if we can get some of the stuff out. They had to make, they agreed to make like one change. Um, but basically, <clears throat> the concern is, you know, we're following New York law and I have no clue what New York law is. And basically, there's a demification language that's not allowed in the law, so you might have to be fighting in court if there's a violation. It only happens if there's a violation. <coughs> you know, obviously, you would hope there would never be a violation of, of anything in the contract, dealing with filming and all that stuff. But it's a, it's a concern that I just didn't want to sign it. And if we didn't sign it, we wouldn't have a play. How long have we been with this company? Uh, 
I can't say how many, I'd say probably three or four years I've signed this agreement, same changes. Um, usually just mark out state of Ohio, and usually the implication I always put wording to the extent permitted by high law, because people won't take it out, but if you put to the extent permitted by high law, well, high law doesn't allow it, so. Right. So that's the changes we, I've always made, and this year is a problem. So Do if we, we don't sign it, we can't do Shrek. What the differences are between Ohio law and New York law? No, we don't. Um, I mean, he talks about it. it a lot of it's just identification. If if we violate the contracts, we're going to basically pay for the attorneys, pay the, the fines if we violate it for any different negative reasons listed in there. But we haven't had an issue in the past, and we hope we wouldn't have the issue in the future. But there's no guarantee of that. Um, but we would hope our staff would know we got to make sure we follow the requirements of the contract. Um, <clears throat> That's really what you know, you know, Mr. Grody said. It comes down to if you want to have a performing program, you're probably going to have to accept these contracts, even though they may not comply with our law. And this is more than just our musical, I assume. It's this one's all Shrek. The music we buy. Not all the music. The one we deal with now is the Shrek one. It's, they do like one big play uh, a year. Well, yeah, but Cinderella. I don't know if this affected like our curriculum, our music. Like no, because uh, yeah, because you don't have this kind of stuff. Because you buy just buy it from music stores. Okay. We don't have to sign this kind of contract. We only have to when we're using the rights of, you know, but this is Shrek, is what they want to do this time. So really two options is, is to, you know, authorize me to sign it, and if there's an issue that we as a board will have to fight it. Uh, or if we deny it, then I can try to find somebody else or somewhere else that, don't have, that doesn't have the same requirements or... Have other school districts done anything regarding this? Uh, I've not heard of any problems, no. No, I would assume it's the same issue in all schools. Um, I know some schools, they just, they just sign stuff, don't think about it. I read it. So, <laughs> well, we appreciate that. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't. They don't. They just read, they just sign a document, move them through, and, and it doesn't matter what it says. And I, I sign it, make sure we try to do it over and over again. Always the same things. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, based on Mr. Grody's we either got to accept it or reject it. Well, and I want them to have a musical, so. Mm -hmm. And then understand that hopefully, I mean, probably 99% of the time there won't be an issue. And I know our staff does a good job of making multiple and announcements and documenting and programs about recording and, I would and agree. that stuff. So I know they do yeah. a kind of good job. That's why I said we have that so. issue with all the times we've had before, so. It's, I just don't feel comfortable signing without your knowing it and approving it. So. Okay. Um, oh, my, I had one other question about um, the first reading. Um, we approved this first reading tonight for the board member compensation. The second reading would be after a new board is seated. Will that be an issue? No. Um, if you look at the executive content, I put Dane Gash's email mm -hmm. in there. I he read said, that. He said all the board has to do is basically is take action before, and we've done that. We did that in January at the organizational meeting. All we got to do now is make the policy reflect the action the board took back in January. Okay. Because uh, that was my question. I sent to him. I went, realized, oh, no, is this a problem? He didn't think it was a problem at all. He just felt like, and we have an attorney opinion backing up our, the reason we're doing it, which is why I wanted you to see that too. Okay. Is I feel we're fine because you you approved it way back in January. All right. Anyone else? And the other option you can do the temporary approval of this one too at the same time if you want, where it's in place. But I don't think it's need to, okay. need to be. Okay. All right, Mr. Jones. Mr. Zaini. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes, we've passed all those. We're ready to discuss the new K-3 school building. So uh, before Rick talks, oh, do you have to? Okay. Do you need to do your thing first, the motion? Are we good? No, you don't. Okay. Not yet, no. So before um, Rick talks, the financial aspect, um, I wanted to give you some numbers so you have a general idea of where we're sitting right now with our current elementaries. So, <clears throat> and, and this is current. So each of the elementaries, the renovated and, and the old, um, all have six classrooms per grade level available. Um, we currently 
have, um, we're full in K1 at Aetna. Um, we have one opening at two and three, but when I tell you that we have one opening, we are also negative five seats in second grade at Aetna. So we were able to do that through that earlier <coughs> MOU that because of the split, so the teachers are being paid overage. So technically, um, if the numbers stay the same moving into next year, we will need another teacher at second grade at Aetna and we will be full <coughs> as far as six. And we have two, we only have two openings in third grade at Aetna. So after that, we're completely full as far as classrooms are concerned. Um, Kirkersville, we're full in both second and third grade with six teachers and we have zero openings in third grade. So there are, are no openings for kids. Um, we do have five teachers in K-1. We're doing okay kindergarten across the board. We only have one opening in first grade. Wow. So technically, um, with zero and one, we would actually need another third grade teacher and another first grade, which would effectively then make Kirkersville full as far as the six classrooms are concerned. Um, for Pascala, we don't, we're not close as far as um, right down there to the border of numbers. We do have two... Um, classes with six and one with five, well actually we have 5.5.5, but it averages out that way. So we're two full and two with room for um, one more. So as far as growth is concerned, we have very little wiggle room yeah. for the six classrooms we have, which is why we initially started the conversation about building <coughs> the new elementary larger, because the reality is we're, we're pretty much there now. Right. And um, we, haven't even <laughs> we haven't even remodeled Kirkersville. And we're, we, are, we are very close to being um, at capacity. So that's just kind of some numbers and background. Rick can talk about money. So under the original design was approximately 580, 600 kids. That's how we came up with the $24 million. When we ran through the, the POR, which is the program requirements, um, a couple weeks ago, took it up to 800 kids, pretty close to 80,000. It was 80,000, but actually 76. That was $27.6 million. So this one, the actual was 80,000. The actual they designed, we saw was 76. So it's four, almost 4,000 under times 300 bucks. You know, that's quite a bit of savings there. So, uh, but we believe we need $27 million. And we have 24. So I, I mentioned basically we have a couple options. One is, the biggest option really, I mean, one option is take out general fund, $3 million. That's an option. Not my favorite option, but it's an option. The second option, as I mentioned, um, Back when we did the intermediate school, four or five, and when we approved SD, that building was already over budget by $2.4 million. So in order to move forward to DD, the board did transfer $2.4 million out of the general fund into an 070 construction account. That money still sits there today. So instead of using it when we actually built the building, we had a lot, of, we had we have over $3 million in interest. So we used the $2.4 million basically for the cover of the overage of the project, which is the interest income from the $78 million bond issue, which means we haven't touched. And really, that 2.4 is more of like a collateral because um, OFCC said if some reason they did an addendum that they had to put more money in, then we'd have to pay all that interest back. <coughs> that's we, that's kind of why we have $2.4 million set in there for that. Um, <coughs> but this is our new, our new last building, and we know AD, OD is, I mean, not OD, OFCC is not putting more money in. Right. So I feel more comfortable, but we don't, we don't necessarily have to spend that right now either. Whereas we have $5 million on hand for the Potassium renovation. We can go ahead and use $2.4 million of the Potassium renovation and keep the 2.4 back until we get to Potassium. Once, that, once we get there, we know all the OFCC projects are done. There's no chance of anything happening, and we'll be good. Um, <coughs> still leaves us about 600000 short. And, in the project, we still have about seven hundred thousand dollars in interest that we haven't spent yet. Kind of, we haven't because we already spent two point four. I haven't spent any more because we don't have anything to back it up. So we could use that, or we could use some of the PI contingency money because we are saying half a million dollars a year aside out of the jet jet incomes as a PI contingency. There's about a million dollars sitting there right now. Um, you know, we still got a lot of projects to do, but we feel, Dr. Perkins and I feel, we need to take this building to eight hundred. I don't think it's really a choice. I think we have to do it. Um, and it's only going, the cheapest point to add it is to do it now. When they bid it out, that's going to be the cheapest to put the extra four classrooms on that we want. And, and it's oversized everything for 800 kids. So basically, I'm asking the board to agree to allocate three additional million dollars towards 
renovated to the new K3 elementary school to take the budget up to 27 million. And that will come out of, technically out of, in the end, out of that 2.4 we moved forward, we previously had set aside, plus any PI or interest income to cover the full $30 million okay. without touching the general fund at all. Yeah. Any further? <coughs> so, there's really not a motion out there, I just want to discuss it, but if, uh, I don't necessarily need a motion. I just guess most of y'all you say, unless you want to, is you want to go to 800 kids, you want to go to 27 million. That's what I guess we have to do. Yeah, we do. I have a question that's unrelated to the financial piece. Was the core space adjusted for the building when we added the four additional classrooms, or is in that not a thing for the K threes? Well, not in the not in the renovations. No. I meant for this one because. Oh yes, that was okay. already did. We did that prior. We did that before we even added on okay. the extra classrooms. Just in, in case we were for going okay, adding gotcha. on later. Um, so yes, that was already done. And it's still being built that we could potentially add more on the end if we needed to, right? Uh, well, there, I mean, it's 150 feet until you get right. to the next one. Yeah, we'd have the to only concern the is the cafeteria yeah. and the gym. Really, that's the two yeah. big things okay. in the bathrooms. That's why originally the, caf the uh, cafeteria area was already sized for about 700 kids. It, I think actually sized for 800 mm -hmm. kids. 800. We went to 800, they had to enlarge in the gym a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so there's actually a little room for at least one, a set of bleachers, small set, probably similar to the four or five, that kind of thing, not very much. Um, and they had to make the cafeteria with serving lines just a little bit bigger. But everything else was pretty well set. Okay. Really the big thing was just adding the four additional classrooms. Um, so if, if we wanted to look at adding future, we might want to oversize, but that gets us well above $27 right. million, no. which is part of the concern. Yeah. Yeah. And, and having a, I mean, having much, 800 is That's a probably a, a, a good lot. max for elementary at that point. And, and with our planning and working with proper scouties, we should probably then at some point start revisiting when do we have to yeah. look at an additional building, go back for a bond to voters, because that's a big elementary school. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're all in agreement, yep. mm -hmm. that's basically yep. we will confirm. We're, basically let Garmill know for sure that we do want 800 and we are putting three more million dollars in for a $27 million budget. Thank you. What's our completion date projected? Uh, July of 24. Opening, uh, opening. Oh, 24, so this is 21, so we're talking three years. Yeah, it won't be, years, expect to get bid, mm -hmm. it's gonna get bid next late summer, fall, and then construction will start probably March of 23 in there, similar <coughs> to what they did to four or five. And then basically from March all the way till July, August. Okay. Be. I'm Can we order the air handlers oh, now? Sorry. That's yeah. what I was thinking, yeah. Air handlers, the metal roof, the generator. <laughs> generator can be in. Uh, what were you going to say, Roger? I'm sitting here thinking, what's our projection for the next four or five years? I mean, is, is this, we're going to outgrow this before we get there? That's, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. So we need to be looking. Yeah, we have Down to keep the looking, road, planning. obviously. Yeah. We have to plan and keep looking. I will I mean, say there's the a real good possibility before this building's done that we may need to go to the ballot. Yeah. Yep. I will say the kindergarten class is smaller than projected, which I don't know if it'll stay that way. <coughs> obviously, people keep coming, but that, that does help it a little bit. It does help. We have room in all of our kindergarten classrooms, which is, is nice, having a little bit smaller classrooms. I think teachers right. probably appreciate that for sure at that level especially, but it depends on the enrollment. That's always the unknown variable. Yeah, before we before we had increased it, Roger, we were going to be 111 percent anyway projected mm -hmm. with this new K3. Yeah. So, <clears throat> wow, that's scary. Yeah. It is. I mean, yeah. Well, again, it's not yeah, slowing it's, uh, down. No. All right. Um, I think the um, 7I, 7J, and 7K. I think we can all kind of discuss together. Um, we need to come up with an organizational meeting and um, a regular meeting for January as well as set a president pro tem for the organizational meeting. So. We can do I separately. Yeah. That'd be a little easier to do I separately. Sure, and that'll together. work. I move John Vincent be president pro tem. Second. Discussion, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Mr. Zaini? Yes. Mr. Vincent? Yes, that passes. We will move on to the meetings themselves. 
organization needs to happen before the 15th. Thursday the 13th? I'm just throwing things out. I can do that. January 13, 22, 7 o'clock here. Um, Are we doing the, the sword and the, yeah. and the regular yeah. right after? The idea would be organizational meeting. Our regular meeting would occur immediately after the organization if you want yeah. to. Do we want to do 7 or do, do we want to do organization at 6.30? I think 7 would be fine. Seven's fine, okay. Can you do the 13th, Roger? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I will plan on it, but. Okay. Would you ask Mr. <coughs> Graham what these plans are? And yes. Know, so. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So is everyone good with Thursday the 13th at 7 here? I was just thinking I, it's fine. Yeah. We can go another day. Do you need a different day? Is everyone available the Wednesday before the 12th? I have parent-teacher conferences that night. Then yeah, we'll just leave it on the 13th. I could do Tuesday, though. I could, yeah, I could do Tuesday. I might oh, wait. Oh, Tuesday's, Tuesday's fine. Do it on the quarter. Yeah, we'll just, All right. Thursday's fine. All right, Thursday at 7. Is that motion, your movement? I motion for the org meeting to be, be here. Thursday, January 13th at 7 p.m., followed by the regular meeting. I'll second that. <coughs> Mr. Jones. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Okay, that passes. We'll move on. We have. Um, <coughs> Treasure items, donations, purpose, and then a now. We can take them all, I believe. Motion approval of 8A through C. Second. Uh, donations, we always appreciate those. Thank you. <coughs> um, statement of purpose, basically, it's just one additional project. I mean, one additional program to get moving. Um, then and now certificates, again, deal with timing of getting the purchase order in place prior to the uh, invoice. Uh, Basically, staples was just a, it was time, they're both just timing issues. Sometimes you just don't know when they're going to show up. And then we have them and then we have to do it. So I asked the board to approve all those. Okay. Questions? Mr. Jones, please. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes. Approved superintendent's items. Dr. Perkins. Just a couple of things. So I know Bob mentioned previously um, we're going to start the meeting tomorrow at Aetna. So our custodial and maintenance staff are going to be working a little bit on some of the big things tomorrow. And then Monday, I just wanted to acknowledge our, um, we have quite a few student athletes who will be helping move Monday and Tuesday. Um, we've got kids from the rugby team, baseball, basketball, wrestling, um, and football. So we'll be seeing them pizza and they will be doing something give back for us while doing their job. So awesome. Yeah, that um, <clears throat> we very much appreciated that. Love so the community service. Mm -hmm. It's great. And we believe we will be able to have it done in those two days with that kind of manpower and help. So um, that's a note on that. I wanted to <coughs> comment again, just another update on our subs. Um, as of this time, we've had 43 subs go oh, through our training. Wow. Um, and we've had 75% of them have already subbed one day. So we're, we're averaging about a 90% fill rate. So no, things are right. much, <coughs> much improved. Much improved. Glad so, it worked. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely a positive, and hope, hopefully our legislators can continue to allow us to do that in years to come. But it's it's going really well. So that's um, a good thing. And then lastly, just an update on the digital academy. Um, just wanted to give you some numbers. We currently going into second semester have a 128 kids enrolled. Um, we did have 26 come back to in person. I would say a larger portion have been elementary than the secondary, and we do have. 41 going digital second semester. So it seems to be working for certain kids. So I think it was most definitely with six through 12, a good thing we started, <coughs> we're gonna revisit the K-5 and whether that continue that or not. 
will be based on numbers come the spring, but it's going really well at the upper grade levels. <coughs> so, and that's all I have for you. All right. Request to speak on non-agenda items, Teamsters, Sleet, no? All right, well, we have an executive session here, so we need a motion to adjourn into executive session. So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Engel. <coughs> Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes, we are in executive session at eight o'clock. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. We are back in session. It is 824. Mr. Jones, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Engel. Here. Mrs. Moore. Here. Mrs. Spindler. Here. Mr. Zani. Here. Mr. Vincent. Here. A quorum is still present, and we will move on to 12A SLEA grievance. We're going to need a motion to deny or a motion to grant. I will make a motion to deny the grievance and direct the board president to work with legal counsel to draft an official response to the union denying the grievance. I'll second that. Any discussion? Mr. Jones. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes. Motion to deny the grievance has been accepted. And that takes us to adjournment. Motion to adjourn, please, someone. So moved. Second. Mr. Jones. Mrs. Spindler. Yes. Mrs. Engel. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Zani. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yes, we are adjourned at 826.